What's going on, everybody? It's your boy Spencer. Taking a look at my most updated water list. Um, this is a deck that I've played for a really long time now, for probably a couple of years. I don't know what draws me to it, but I do love to pick it up and, you know, make different theories, craft different theories about kind of how I should play the deck. And this is my most recent list. This is the one I've been playing with recently. So if you've been following along with this, or maybe you're new to it, maybe you really just like Water XYZ, uh, this is how I play it. I don't play Goza Match. I don't like to play floodgates. I just don't think they're fun. <laughs> so like, I'm, it's probably the best way to do it. Uh, but yeah. So let's take a look. Okay. I do run 12 going second cards. And there's a little new tech choice. Definitely something I haven't showcased before. I only run one Nibiru. You, you don't really even have to do this. This is just kind of silly. I play one cross out, right? Called by the Graves at one. But I think cross out's better than called by, at least for the very specific case of this deck. Because losing, like you can lose to Ash like pretty easily. It kind of sucks. So, uh, also Nibiru. A lot of the times you can make a bah Bahamut Shark and totally awesome before your opponent ever gets the opportunity to Nibiru you. So, that's pretty cool. Droll usually doesn't matter. But, like I said, you know, you're only playing one cross out. So, is it really worth it? I don't know. Should you even play cross out? I'm not sure either. 90% of this list, I'm pretty sure, is like pretty good. Um, but, it's just like a random tech choice for me. How about that? But, this could easily be three Ash Blossom. Three Droll. Three Infirm. Then, three Cash Tier Fenrir. So, this card lets you search out a cast hero monster, obviously. And normally the card that you're going to search out is another copy of Fenrir. But Rise Heart is a level 4. It does lock you in XYZs, but uh, yeah, that's all you play in this deck. So it's really, really cool. It is a free, without normal summoning, level 4 body. And when you're playing an XYZ deck, that's everything. It's huge. It's massive. I used to run this at 2. I just hated seeing it in my hand. I just saw it all the time. I feel like, even though it was at 2. I feel like I just, this card was like glued to my opening hand. And if you open it, cool. You use it, you special summon, it's free. Otherwise, you search it out from the deck. I used to have this mentality that you needed to do it. I would get, I would say in this deck specifically, you don't need to. The problem is normally you want to go to F0. So you need to have that extra body to bring out from the deck. And it's really important. For this case, it's not because you can go into double Bahamut Shark. So that's why I kind of play this at one now. And I really like it. There's not a, lot of, not a ton of great fish targets. It's a pretty limited pool. Um, at least ones that don't lock you into water monsters. This one does. But you can use this later. This is a very, very, very interesting card. So, you can obviously special summon this from the hand. The cool thing is, right, some of these cards are not water. But, Stealth Kragan does make everything a water. And when you do that, that means you can use Abyss Shark even if you have some of these awkward bodies on the board. So, it's a very important thing to note. Three copies of Abyss Shark is the best one. Brings out a free body from the deck. You do want to run at least one copy of Lantern Shark, because if you open up this and be and be you tuna full princess, it's a funny name. You can bring out Buzzsaw Shark and then bring. Are you? Excuse me. You can bring out Lantern Shark, which then can bring out Buzzsaw Shark. So this is a tech card. Not really a tech card, but this is definitely something that's worth noting. I used to not run this, but running it at one is like absolutely necessary. So you have something else in your hand, you want to be able to use it. Two copies of Mina Ruka. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Probably not. But it is a free special summon from the hand. I used to run Silent Angler, but sometimes locking yourself out of special summoning from the hand is really bad. Especially if you have something like XYZ or Remora. It's a good replacement for it. Technically, also, every once in a while, it does come up where you can tribute it. I think you can tribute like a water monster. Banish one. Yeah, just base it up. Fish, Sea Serpent, Aqua, which is what all these cards are, to negate a card in the field. It has come up before, but otherwise, it's just an extender from the hand. Kind of fills the same role. As uh, Silent Angler did. Three copies of XYZ Remora. This card's unreal. It's like one of the best XYZ cards in the entire game of Yu-Gi-Oh. Being able to special summon from the hand is good. But being able to bring back two buddies is even better. It's like a one card Bahamut Shark plus an extra four. And it does not walk you into waters at all. Three copies of Bayutu No Full Princess. Three copies of Pure Map, right? It searches it out. And technically, even though, I mean, you'll see that I think every once in a while. Like, most of the time, Pure Res Map is meant to search this out. But if you already have it in the hand, you can search something like Droll and Ash. Now, you can't use it for two turns, which kind of stinks, but I guess at the end of the day, it's kind of like a deck thinner. Uh, you do run one copy of the Hyper Rank Up Magic Force. It's kind of like one of your main plays. Three copies of Pot of Prosperity. I wish there was a card that really helped with the consistency of fish. Does not have, There's no such thing as a fish searcher. Uh, you don't really want to one run, excuse me, Moray of Greed. First of all, you don't run a super high level of water monsters, as you can see. I don't really want to one run the uh, water kaiju. 
Three copies of White Mirror. This is a really good card. Monster Reborn plus a Search, which is really important for something like XYZ or Mora. Plus our shark targets itself. Brings out Remora. Go into Bahamut Shark. Detach the Remora. Right? You'll see that in just a second. Then you can just search a copy. And then you can use the effect. And I talked about this. Like, instead of Called by the Grave, you run Cross Out. I think it's objectively better. Because it does help you against stuff like Imperm. And it does help you against something like Nibiru. So if you're going to run one, I think it's better to play Cross Out. Uh, one copy of number 99. Number 38. Number 23. So these are both of my targets. You're never really going to be locked into waters, but you know the one time you are, which is Abyss Shark, you just bring this out during your opponent's turn. This runs my Photon Lord, but having an Omni to get, I think, is actually really important. S39 goes into number 99. Same thing with number 39. Two copies of Bahamut Shark, two copies of Toad, which normally lets you go into F0, plus double Toad, and that's a very good interaction. Uh, number four, Stealth Kragan. You can also run two. And drop Exciton Knight. I just like Exciton Knight because it's like, it's almost like Downward Magician in a weird way. It doesn't send. But most of the time, being able to destroy all cards your opponent controls. And if they imperm it, you attack. You can go into Zeus. It's kind of like having double Zeus, but you get to play one less card. And then the side deck, I never really pay too much attention to. It's always different every format. So whenever you're watching this video, you know, make your own side deck. All right, let's jump over into some replays. I'm going to show one combo. This is where Cash Tira comes in, and I'll show you what having that free level 4 body can really do for the deck. It does a lot, spoiler. So that's a free body, locked in into XYZs, which is no problem, because your entire extra deck is that. And that, and there's where Lantern Shark comes in, right? It does make a huge difference here. You can go into Bahamut Shark, bring out Toad, another Bahamut Shark. Right, everything is water, so that's really important. And then suddenly, you now have a really good end board. Cash Tira Fenrir, Double Toad, Stealth Kragan, F0, and then I did have Ash in my hand, not really too important. But that's pretty cool. So let's take a look. I think I did kind of the same combo, but I have one more extender. White Mirror is insane. So there goes the free level four on the board in Rise Heart. And then I guess Lantern Shark comes up again. So it's like, you really do have to play one. And I wouldn't recommend playing more than one, but it does work out here. Uh, Bahamut Shark goes into Toad. White Mirror can get me Remora. I don't even think I get to use Remora. I had so many bodies on the board, so it just ends up being a Monster Reborn and a little bit of deck thinning, but now I can go into the Utopia side. So literally every single spot on my board is going to be filled with negates and boss monsters, which is really fun. That's why I like to play this deck. And then there goes Lance. I have two Omni Negates, Spell Negate, Monster Negate, Fenrir. Pretty cool. He's just going to keep wasting cards here. No Power Bond for you. I obviously have to get rid of that because if he does have Cyber Dragon, then literally every single monster on my board is gone. So I was kind of forced my hand there. I do still have Called by the Grave, uh, which I guess is Cross Out Designator. Again, it's a pretty small difference. Uh, in this case, you know, I'm also Battle Protected, <laughs> which is so absurd. So good, right? And also, there's one other thing. Like, if your body, if your opponent, excuse me, has a really big monster on their board, and like 3,000 attack most of the time is good enough, at least you can crash. But if not, you know, don't forget, this card is a secondary effect. That if an XYZ monster on your field is destroyed, it gains that attack. So it helps it get up to like 5,000, 6,000 life or attack points. And 99.9% .9 of the time, it's probably going to be good enough. I want to show you guys like a really weird, awkward hand. And again, this is where Pyrrhic Maz map is kind of rough. I can't use Droll during my opponent's turn, obviously. I have to wait until like my crack back, which is not good. But I did do a little bit of deck thinning here. Like, apparently Lantern Shark is extremely important. Like every replay I'm showing has it. Here comes Abyss Shark. So if you can't go into the F-Zero engine, it's no big deal. Okay, you can still do a lot of cool stuff. And I think the best part about this deck is the Recursion. So this isn't amazing, but I did have Ash. I do have Double Toad, and I do have Stealth Dragon. And I have crazy follow-up, right? Which is very important. Every time Toad leaves the field, I get something back. And look, isn't that funny? I just wanted to show this. Like, for a few things, right? The Crackback is going to be crazy. Toad's going to add back two cards to the hand. And maybe even I can add back one of the Toads to my extra deck so I can use Bahamut Shark again. Man, that's funny. The level, level four water. <laughs> so I could overlay it in anything that I wanted. But yeah, Toad's going to bring this back. I'm going to showcase another reason about that recursion. I think it's this one, if I'm not mistaken. My opponent has Lava Golem, but if you have two Toad, you're going to get a lot of cards. Again, I think I already had Butinful Princess. 
Yeah, Droll doesn't do anything. I mean, well, that's not necessarily true, but most of the time, depending on the hand, you can really pivot. So your opponent's kind of just losing one card. You don't lose to Droll most of the time. And that's important, right? My opponent Droll's me. Okay, well, I have two Omni Negates, F0 and Stealth Kragen. I think that's pretty good. Again, I can't use Ash. I activated Piri Res Map. But again, it's one less card on my deck. Ash is good to have in your hand. But it's a good board. I'm trying to see which one it was where my opponent had Lava. It's one of these last replays here. I didn't really have too much. I've shown this deck a lot. But this is such a great opening. This is going to bring something else out. And yeah, this card being a fish is so important. It's going to bring back two buddies. It's crazy that Remore can even bring back a, like a copy of itself. Almost every card I can think of in Yu-Gi-Oh! says accept a copy of itself when it has an effect like that, but it doesn't. And this is like the ultra mega standard board. Double Toad, Stealth Kragen, F-Zero. I'm going to steal my opponent's Lightning Storm. Being able to steal a card and recursion is usually just super duper ridiculous. Here goes the Imperm. I still have Stealth Kragen. I think I still have one Toad. I'm going to use it. He's going to go on zero cards. I'm going to add back. I'm going to have follow-up plays for next turn. And my opponent is uh, done. He's done for. Last replay I will show here. This is a insanely good opening. Especially when you have Remora. Being able to have this card back and use White Mirror with it is so important. Because it can just be another extender. Searching and reborning. There goes Droll again. Again, doesn't really do anything. I'm going to be able to produce the same end board. You can almost always pivot here. And there goes the Lava Golem. Okay, I was waiting for this. This will be the last replay. So I'm already going to get something back to my hand. My setup's really, really good here. I have no idea what he's playing. I had to draw my own, which I guess is pretty cool. I can go ahead and pop that. He's going to go to the battle phase, get over my toad, but I'm going to add that back. I still have Stealth Gregan. He's going to add the Lava Golem back to his hand, but you can't let me go back to the crackback. I have too much follow-up. Too much burn damage with Stealth Gregan, too. That's important. There goes Utopic Sage. I can go into the Utopia. He goes for Droll, I think, again. Double Droll. Double doesn't matter. So, yeah, it's a fun list. Uh, let me know what you guys think about this in the comment section down below. Other than that's going to do it for today's video, and I will see you guys next time.